In this episode, we visit Ara Manzanillo, the Great Green Macaw Reintroduction Center located in the Limon province of Costa Rica. With population estimates of only 500 to 1,000 wild great green macaws left in the world, Ara Manzanillo plays a vital role in preserving this critically endangered species from extinction. Join us as we venture into the jungle to observe the great green macaw and learn more about the conservation efforts by Ara Manzanillo. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button. Now, let's get into the adventure. So we're currently heading up this insane driveway to Project Ara, which is the uh, one of the largest sanctuaries for the great green macaw, which is an endangered species. And uh, we thought we were just going to pull off of this road and get to the sanctuary, but this is proving to be a journey in itself. Wow. So we just arrived on property and uh, so they only allow 10 appointments a day or 10 reservations so they try to keep this very limited so um, we're walking into the sanctuary to put this up. There's a couple of differences. Mainly, the great green macaw has a narrower food range, so it eats seeds and nuts, and therefore it has a smaller overall range. So it goes only from Nicaragua down to about Colombia or Ecuador, whereas the scarlet macaw, for example, it goes up to Mexico and down to Bolivia. And it also eats fruits, and so it has a much broader spectrum of things to eat, and it can, it can easier survive. And so that's why the great green macaw is endangered with the scarlet macaw is not. The storage range of the great green macaw was all this so almost up to the Pacific and up to the border in, in to Panama and to Nicaragua. But around the 2000s there was only one small habitat left mainly because of catch rate and deforestation. Deforestation is a problem for the macaws because they uh, rely on a very specific kind of tree, the almendro or the mountain almond. Mm. This is a mountain almond and the trees grow really slowly but also really big. So mostly you have a big tree sticking out above the can canopy of the, mm -hmm. the forest. And the birds like to nest in that tree because it provides them with food for their, for their chicks and for themselves and also with, with nesting ground because in a storm or something the big branch will break off from the tree and there will be a natural cavity and so the birds mm. can nest in that. So if there's no almendros, there will be no great green macaws. Mm. Mm. And that's, that's why we are here. Um, we started reintroducing birds since 2014. In this area, down here where we are, we started with 45 birds uh, from a breeding center near San Jose. And now we are up to 85 birds because we help the birds to reproduce around here in the forest. They tend to reproduce faster in the wild than in captivity because in captivity they will be under threat the whole time and we can't replicate their natural environment. So we started setting up nest boxes to make it easier to find nests. We started with wooden nest boxes but those got just chewed up by the macaws because they have a very powerful beak and it also stimulates their breeding hormones when they chew on wood. So the wooden box was just gone, nothing left. So then we took a metal barrel and brought it up, uh, but the birds didn't like it because it was too hot. Right? So the third iteration was this one, this is a plastic barrel. Um, and it's very light, it's very very easy to get up the tree and the birds um, it was a success the birds started nesting inside so in the first year we had only seven boxes and one one pair nesting in them 
and now we are up to more than 20 boxes. Most of them scattered around in, in the jungle. Some at other projects, like at the uh, Jaguar Rescue Center, if you've mm -hmm. been there. Just today we, we brought a chick to the vet to get it checked up. And after about a month they hatch. And then it takes about two to three months so they start flying. But they will, will stay with the parents for up to a year. Um, and then the parents will go on to breed another time. So this is working with the people, not with the birds. In order to protect the birds and to educate the public, we've worked with over 25 schools, over 3,500 students. Um, and this is very important because, as I said, we had a bird ending up in a soup and we don't want that, obviously. So the people have to be made aware how important these birds are, how endangered they are. Keep your eyes open. Is this the only box that's closed here? Uh, no, there's a lot, but you can, like they are in the forest, you can't see them. This is the only one you can see from the forest. They can lay up to, to four feet, uh, four eggs in the cloud. They can actually live very long. So they can oh. live for <laughs> wow. They lay, the, they can lay at most four eggs, but the most uh, one has ever laid is five. Well, I've been to, I'd love, at least my local zoos a lot, I've never seen the green ones for them. Um, but there was a lot of pet so I imagine they still come into captivity. The type of guy. Oh, look, wow. Look how big the animal is. I know. And there you know, he's done. Oh, he's done. Wow.
Is it? So pretty. Wow. We could save it with our keepsakes. Move it. It's like iridescent. It's, it's iridescent. changing colors. Wow. It looks like one of those stickers. Whoa. Buen suerte. Good luck. Adios. Nos vemos. We're making our way out of the Aura project right now. Majestic. Magic. I don't really know. It's just it's quite incredible to just be here. Uh, but the fact that there's less than 1,500 of these birds in the world, and the primary reason for their population decline is human and deforestation, is uh, it's quite sad. But um, that is a huge part of why we're here to get more connected to the planet, to understand the impact that we have as humans and what we could do to try to reverse the impacts of human civilization. Wow. Adios. Yeah, one thing that you learned. I try to read and uh, plant the trees and yeah, so they can rehabilitate from the cause because they're step up about 85. Decided with a story to be another 85. Well, there's only like 1,500 in the world. So and like there's like about 350 in um and Costa Rica, and those 350 are the most impacted in our area. They know you're talking about them. They're like, hey, you're talking about me. We're they laughing. Are very pretty. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's oh. Thanks again for watching this episode of the Free Range Squad. Ara Manzanillo is a great example of a symbiotic relationship between humans and animals. It's a demonstration of how we can work to restore some of the damage that has been done due to deforestation and population growth. Populations of great green macaw require the mountain almond tree, and due to deforestation, the population has been declining rapidly in Latin America. The tour costs approximately $20 for adults and children 12 and under are free. The daily tours are at the feeding time of the green macaws, which is around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so make sure you plan advance of your trip. Understanding the limited number of these animals in the wild is really sobering when you consider the impact that humans have had on the planet. And the reality that maybe two generations from now, people won't be able to see the great green macaw. I highly recommend visiting the Ara Manzanillo project. They're doing incredible work with the rehabilitation and release of these great green macaws in the wild. All of the information about Ara Manzanillo will be in the description, so please check it out and go and support them any way you can. But until our next adventure, Pura Vida.